Yeah, hi everyone. Um, it's, uh, it's us again, and um, there's some news from the uh, WebAssembly um, project or this, uh, this, uh, um, this push to get um, have another angle of uh, getting LibreOffice running in the browser. So um, yeah, we got some news there with Calc and some headless operations um, now working. Um, welcome to the talk. Um, um, who's talking? Balaj Varga. Yeah, and it's Thorsten. Um, yeah, we're both working for Allotropia. And, um, right, so um, first of all, big thanks to an LNET um, and by extension, for a big thank you to the European Union for actually funding this. Um, so, can you see the. If you can't see the text, because it's. Um, Kind of bad contrast. Let me know, and we fix that, patch that up on the spot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, wh why are we doing this? Um, very quickly, um, the um, which uh, LibreOffice per se, with this LibreOffice technology, and also with all the porting um, that, were, that was happening um, since since many many years, LibreOffice is just the, the prototypical thing that you want to run natively, like everywhere, and it's been been ported to very many um, platforms and, um, and and devices and architecture. So kind of was a natural idea um, when Wasm was kind of uh, gaining popularity in 2014-15 to try that. And we tried it and it didn't quite work and um, so we, we waited it out a little bit and then we tried it again. Um, and I think it's, um, it's a natural thing to do, like, like games and other applications running, running in the browser. That's kind of one of the platforms that matters and it's kind of becoming more and more of an operating system with the like you can access very many things already from a browser that previously you had no access to um, on your system so that, that's why we did it um, yeah let me know if you indeed can't see can't read the, the text can you no. well, let's fix that then Interestingly, it has better contrast here. Why is that broken in the slideshow? Who, who broke that? <laughs> Must have been me. So we can maybe just uh, do it here then, if that's better. And um, hide some toolbars. And hide some more toolbars. Um, okay, that's probably as good as it gets. Um, yeah, so, so the thing, kind of uh, uh, working title, LOVA for LibreOffice WebAssembly, it's a native port, it runs client-side, like fully so, like you don't need a server, you just need to put some, some uh, binary blob somewhere uh, on a static, um, on a, like, on a web server that, uh, um, or you can have it also locally, but, but you need some the code somewhere and then it pulls it and runs it in the browser. As I said, funded by an Elnet Horizon 2020 um, and Allotropia Challenges. Um, <laughs> quite a few, as it turned out. Um, the maturity of the platform, I think, was the, the biggest problem, um, the biggest single issue that, that we faced because, yeah, it's um, it's very much work in progress, very um, very active, which is good, but also very kind of fragile. Something breaks randomly, and and you really don't know um, if, as always with open source, either you you fix your bug yourself, or you wait for someone to fix it, or you pay someone to fix it, and. And the, the, the platform itself, like the browser, the um, M script, and et cetera, that's kind of extremely large surface there. Uh, and then the usual problems with LibreOffice, very large, um, very many third party dependencies, um, notorious to break everything left and right, because of that size, um, size of the resulting binary, we kind of knew that um, from the start, so we 
tried to work around that by kind of cutting everything off, like arms, legs, whatever you didn't really need to live, but just wanted to write it to run. Um, so, so that's kind of both the download size that's a problem um, and also like the size in the browser because you, you essentially have tops four gigabytes um, but you probably shouldn't use all of that so essentially probably you got realistically one gigabyte um, in a browser without blowing things up left and right so yeah being small and and of course your binary size counts towards the because it gets loaded, obviously, and the browser counts towards that one gigabyte. Multi-threading, we also knew that's going to be a challenge. Um, um, so we tried to disable that. And for that, right, it was kind of a, a useful target because it, it, when it was developed, it was cooperative multitasking. So writer per se doesn't really need multi-threading. Writer is happily sending itself time or events to do something in the background. Um, yeah, and development and debugging was extremely challenging because of the um, yeah the freshness of the of the um, of the platform. Um, so yeah, so we made some progress there. Hacked size if you if you um, compress it nicely, some 35 megs. Um, we found some way to separate uh, debug info out, which really helps. Um, because it's not GDB and uh, Chrome is actually de decently smart only to pull on demand what it needs. Um, size of the file system image, so you know LibreOffice needs a lot of auxiliary files like fonts and config and, and dialogue GUI um, definitions and all of that needs to be there uh, when you want to run it and that's kind of sizable. Um, clocks about 100 max with everything, so we also tried to cut that down a bit, and then this this um, embeddability thing, um, so that you actually, as always, there's very little point just to have a have that running in the browser. You want to put files in and get files out, and possibly control it from uh, or embed it in a larger application to do something useful with it. Um, so, um, and, and it was pretty clear from the get-go that we're not going to get this, this um, very dynamic um, runtime uh, code generation style, you know, bridge um, to run in a browser, so kind of opted out of that. Current status, um, most of that is upstream, there's two more patches in Garrett that are not merged yet, um, but it's mostly on master. Uh, you can build it if you want to figure out how to do that. Read static slash readme. Um, and there's a feature branch with a bit more uh, work going on. Master, that's essentially the status from February this year. Master's um, hopefully still running um, as office. Um, and um, master status is right now you, you get writer. Uh, and as of today, we got uh, Calgon a bit more running down. So, um, timeline very briefly started a while ago. Then there was some death march, and some, it was quite unclear whether we would pull it off. Uh, and I'm um, quite glad that um, essentially last year's LibreOffice conference, like a week, so we got together, we got some hacking done, and about a week later, things started to fall into place with ECL demo kind of doing the first movements and then crashing, not crashing right away. Um, yeah, and then uh, everything else is history, so we, we had a first and talk with a, um, with the writer coming up. So status right now is Calc is working, PDF export is working, um, also headless C, um, you still see GUI but you can switch that off. Um, and ongoing is kind of bit like really have something headless, um, like without any main loop running. Um, and um, yeah, this kind of embeddability, so kind of get some demo JavaScript framework, at least one. Uh, working where you can just stick it in as an iframe and running inside your web app. Core ideas, um, pretty straightforward, like, like we did all the other ports like Android, iOS, just, just use auto tools and 
plug in the right um, parameters, set up the right environment, and then, then just kind of toil away at it for a year, so until it builds and links, and in the end runs. Um, um, and so I think we're, we were in pretty good shape there, probably, because we've already been porting that to very many um, platforms. Um, QE abstraction, yeah, so we were kind of pondering what to do there, and luckily it turns out that um, there's a Qt plugin um, or a Qt backend that, that uses Qt for main loop and um, a GUI, uh, like GUI toolkit for rendering. Um, and also Qt turns out to have a WASM port, so that sounded like a good idea. And it also turned out to be a decently um, smart idea. So, so there were some problems, but it wasn't that massive. Um, and um, so that's Qt5 right now, the target. There was Qt6, I just got some, I think, 6.3 or something, and they, they, the, that's kind of second tier for, for the Qt company, so they only now started to get WebAssembly on the six, code line 6 going, and we haven't tried it yet, but we might. And um, so for the Linux desktop, um, part, there is a Qt6 um, plugin, so we could try that, but we haven't. So yeah, we went for, for that, and um, that was not silly. Um, core ideas, yeah, just use mscripten and cross-build it. There's, an, there's a few more um, um, compilers, but mscripten looked like mainstream enough and with enough um, activity and, and um, enough people kind of coming at it that sounded like a useful choice. Um, and yeah, so, so that does with the three things. So we, we, we cross build, we use Unscripten, we use Qt. Um, we don't use anything experimental. And that was something that we learned over the uh, time of the, the project that it's not a good idea to use anything experimental on that platform and focus on writer. Major problems, um, <clears throat> in, yeah, moving targets. So, so that the Unscripten platform was, um, so it turns out if we would have started the project um, nine months later, we would have had much fewer problems. Um, other, on the other hand, uh, since we um, kind of learned so much and so we got the groundwork going, so maybe it was very close to the, the perfect time, I don't know. But it was kind of painful. So, so it, it even was that if you install the exact same mscript version on your on your developer machine, depending on the time of the day and the face of the moon, you would get different setups because it would randomly pull some Node.js and that was not kind of uh, properly pinned and yeah, kind of. Irritating. So we went initially. We went with the Docker setup, so we could at least make sure that every developer would, would get exactly the same build environment. So ruling out this. Oh, it crashes. No, it doesn't crash for me. How is that possible? And then uh, two days later, you figure out that your setup was different. A G build. Um, yeah, we needed static linking because in the end, what you get is um, so there is in theory dynamic linking for WebAssembly, but it's very experimental. So it was a no-no. So we wanted, we needed static linking, and since we were kind of very, 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 um, that was we were very active in cutting things off, and and uh, there's Android has a static linking as well. Um, and um, and also iOS, but it's kind of um, yeah, it's kind of manual. So you just list like I know I need those libraries here, and that was we thought that's kind of that should come from the build system. So and then we uh, JMOX embarked on a um, massive project to to add static proper static linking to GBuild, which also took quite a while, and it's a massive change now um, to gbuild but we can do that now and we and the, the silver lining is we can also do it for example for linux so now you can get some um, s office lib s office and it's just one one library that you can link into your whatever you need it for um let me this sound because we want to show you a demo major problems there were plenty <laughs> So the, the most, just to tell you that story, because it's so irritating, 
um, uh, that I will uh, never forget that. So um, when we started and we, we were kind of finally able to statically link all of that into one <coughs> into one blob, um, it turned out that the um, the linking stage took um, north of an hour and uh, something like 80-ish gigabytes of um, memory just to link, which was which was one of those cases like. Um, nobody had the problem before. It was some some pessimization in the uh, in the Python code from mscripten. Nobody had the problem because everybody was smaller, and so there was some O O N square or O N cube loop there, which was just blowing up for us. Uh, and nobody had it before. So, yeah. So we, we fixed the problem by uh, uh, renting some uh, EC2 massive builder and building there, but it really slowed us down. Because imagine, you can't debug, so your only way to debug is to put in some uh, the equivalent of a printf. So it's not a printf, but it ends up in the browser uh, console. So um, your turnaround is one or two hours. So you, you, you put a printf there, and then you figure something out, and then you put another printf somewhere else, and then you need to, of course, build and link again. So two hours later, you are. So, and that's like, you can't really develop like that in, in any way, in any efficient way. So um, actually, we, we, we kind of put uh, the browser aside, and then did the debugging and stripping down on Linux, because we had the static linking there, and it worked decently. Uh, in comparison, yeah. uh, and meanwhile that got fixed. So, so there was this kind of um, the platform evolving um, in a good way. Yeah, the static thing. Um, so let's um, go over for some real moving pixels here. I'd say. Um, so uh, let me get to so so the, how you do that so that's the feature branch so you first you need to source the <coughs> the um, scripting environment you uh, people who were back in the day working with open office might remember that like sourcing some environment in your shell uh, and then you run um, that thing so you have a little local server that serves the, the stuff and opens that in a browser in this case you really want to use Chrome, like not Chromium, Chrome, unfortunately. The hope is that it's getting better over time, like with Firefox catching up. Um, but for now, trust me, you want to use Chrome. Oh, thank you, Dorstan. So let's see some demo uh, about this. Uh, I'm working on that running in uh, WebAssembly to a bit more than one month and also on the headless conversion. Um, where is the mouse? Oh, now it's okay. So as you can see, it's an example document with some um, very simple example. For example, uh, auto filter. Uh, you can see there are the elements as well. And you can also click on here, and the auto filter also works, and uh, the charts as well updated. Uh, thanks to that, there are also shapes in the um, and an image in the example document. And what is much more important that uh, if I press the thing, uh, it's not working. I just want the debug mode, but mm. oh no! Mm. Oh, I just tried with F N F twelve. Ah, yeah, that's better. Mm. So now you can see there is a debug mode. Here, mm, just let's wait. Uh, the Chrome uh, loaded uh, core folder, and you can put here breakpoints. And let's see what's happening. I just put uh, breakpoint uh, the launch out of filter menu. So let's hope it will just stop there. Oh, yeah, that's really great. So. There is a breakpoint, and you can 
see here if it's loaded, it's a little bit slow, of course, but it's working. You can see the, the local variables if it's stub, if it's working, and there is a core stack as well, and you can move on that back and forward. And there are also uh, the local variables as well. And as I mentioned, the core stack. And you can uh, move forward with this button. And that's now it works. And also, uh, let's see again. You can jump uh, just one if you push the button. But in that case, Maybe it will crash. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, yeah, as you uh, see, um, so it's like it's like eight percent okay. So so it's kind of still some some rough edges um, on on this um, let's say developer experience part. But let's. Put it, so let's let's be honest. That's like leaps and bounds better than having to print F debug something as complex as LibreOffice, um, and and it's like yeah. So so that that's the thing that's I'm I'm quite comfortable waiting out. So if it's if it's unbearable, uh, wait three weeks and uh, Chrome, Chrome will ship an update. And and so so they, pr that's pretty nice in a sense that um, there's a lot of activity and also a lot of like. Um, Chrome gets better, and then Firefox gets challenged to get better as well, and so, yeah. Can we start again? Sure, just reload. Uh, sorry for that, the problem is here when we try to load, the file is very big, and uh, memory cannot handle such a big file, and because of that, uh, the Chrome is crash. Uh, that's why it's not always working, just, uh, yeah, 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 of course. And also I can show the PDF ex uh, export as well. Let's click on this. And yeah, you can click here on the PDF export directly. And it's also, there are breakpoints, but I just keep them. And there is a downloaded uh, PDF file, but just export it here. And you can open in the next tab, and there is the exported file. And you can do that as well uh, from the console uh, with the Lodoc uh, LibreOffice Kit command. Just press that one. And there is the Uno command for the export directly to PDF. And oh, that's also a breakpoint there. Just skip that. It, it might be a bit hard to see, but we can maybe put it on the slides. Um, so it's essentially interacting on the JavaScript side. So that's something that you could do from, from your website or from, from your JavaScript code in your website to kind of control LibreOffice by, by sending it commands. Yeah, but it looks like it also works from the command line with the no command as well. And you can open it in the next tab. Uh, it is downloaded to the local file system because in the WebAssembly we use a memory file system, which is way different than the others. But maybe we will talk about it a little bit later. So back to Torsten. Okay, then let's go back to the slides. Um, yeah, let's skip over that. So, so essentially, what what really like the the, the step change in productivity was um, actually getting um, Chrome debugging to work, and you can also do that on Linux, as you see, it, since Chrome there is a is a flat pack that's a bit more involved. But but anyway, it works. This is how you do it. Uh, details are on the slide. So there's three steps you need to do um, to get that going. Remaining problems. Um, uh, a plenty. Um, so, so the largest thing is that uh, in a browser you can't have nested main loops um, because you can't just um, 
um, like busy loop in a browser because the, the browser obviously want to do like wants to, the page needs to stay res, um, responsive. So whenever you you do this this classic LibreOffice thing like open a dialog that opens another dialog, so you have this kind of main loop calling into the main loop recursively. Um, yeah, you're, you're screwed. So um, what we need to do, and there's been um, Collabora and other people have been putting lots of work into that already to get more um, dialogues um, into async mode uh, and um, no more reschedule calls. And, and that's what we need pretty much for every dialogue that we want to run um, in WebAssembly. Uh, and there's some sample commit how to do that. So if you're interested in that, um, that's it's not an easy hack, but it's like an let's say interesting, interesting difficulty, easy hack, um, and have appreciated it clearly. Um, yeah, I think um, uh, Balash, that's mostly like, like what you've been fighting with this uh, this memory file system. Mm. Yes, it's a really tricky one because, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, we use a memory file system in the web assembly, which is a virtual file system. Uh, this is the default uh, file system, which is mounted uh, when the runtime is initialized, and all files uh, is exist strictly in the memory, and uh, any data returned to them is lost when the page is reloaded and uh, because of that at the moment we have to uh, read and write the file with, uh, between the different file systems so just like at the PDF export uh, we have to download the file to the local file system um, but maybe in the future we, we uh, change the memory file system to a uh, node file system which can access us to reach the local file system and in that case we can uh, uh, load a file uh, right from the local file system folders so that will be a future plan but it's very, very tricky well, yeah, and, and it makes sense like so so you can um so you, re you you load it again and then you get like for example user settings so there's a way to um, have some some local storage in browser and of course there's the local file system where you would want to like um, load documents from so that's kind of work to do uh, Qt as I said <coughs> perhaps update to Qt 6 uh, right now we use a patched 5.15.2 um, that we kind of um, forked and that's on the, the GitHub repo there because as I said it was good but not perfect so we, we actually um, the JMOX in that case fixed a number of problems there um, so, so that's kind of pinned to that branch right now. Alternatives using something else um, possibly like in the end state use something like natively so where we would, um, in particular, if we don't need GUI, like if we don't need native LibreOffice GUI, but we just have the document and then some JavaScript GUI around that, then it would probably make sense to kind of have some minimal PCL plug that renders directly to WebGL or whatever. Um, but that's kind of future thing. Um, yeah, many more things to do, we're kind of running out of time. Maybe it's important to WASI, so that's like a, like, uh, not a browser, but it's like a server runtime, headless, um, like Node.js, but for running WebAssembly, which is interesting for something like PDF conversion, really, um, because it's very much more portable than having, um, I mean, Linux, Binaries are nice. I mean, everything is running Linux on a server, but but maybe you don't have, you can't install software or this kind of restricted environment. So this was is clearly interesting for doing headless stuff. Um, dynamic loading could be interesting because it's it's a way to cut down even more like the initial number of bits you need to download. Um, and yeah, Gbuild G -Build was quite, quite super painful, like really, really, really annoying amount of work that we have to put in there. So Mison is a bit of this shiny future thing. I don't know if that's going to really help, but um, 
at least uh, the dependence. You get a lot of, you get a lot of stuff for free from me some because other people already put in the work. <clears throat> okay, um, that's probably it. A lot of time. Project plan finish and merge the kite stuff, and then switch to JavaScript like some demo um, Vue.js or something else like where you can like embed that and, and have some demo application and that targeted for the, until the end of the year. Um, yeah, out of time, slides will be online, so any questions, then there will be answers. How, how big is QT as a portion of download? The, so the question is how large Qt is in proportion of this 100 megabyte blob there. Um, I didn't do that recently. Armin might remember it, but I think it's something like less than a quarter, but it's still sizable. When I, when I remember right, it was something like 18 to 20 percent. Yeah. So, so you, you can <coughs> save quite a bit. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, um, um, uh, a sea change. Like, it's not that you... Um, so, so that the challenge really with the, with the size is that you're not getting cached in your browser. That, that really kills all the fun because then you download it again and again and again when you reload the page. So getting below that magic size where your browser starts caching the bit uh, and everything lower than that really doesn't matter anymore. Because uh, so once you're, you can tweak your browser settings and once you're cached, it's like instantaneous. It's like two seconds to... It's almost faster than native um, to start LibreOffice um, because it's kind of, I don't know why, it's static and kind of just in time compiled, whatever magic happens there. But, but, but so, so there's a very, and then it's a very large incentive to do whatever is, is necessary to get below that size. And, but once you're below that, then you can just put your feet up. And so getting, getting the Q dependency out to me has more like, um, um, yeah, just just more control over your fate, so you're not depending on on Qt anymore in terms of like their timeline, their amount, their, their quality of wasm support, etc., etc. Okay. Any maybe one small question? Otherwise, we're all here. Just hit us up in the hallway or or mail us. Slides will be online. Talk is recorded. If there's no further questions. Then, thanks so much and keep enjoying the conference.